Welcome to the Climate Show, people. Um, I'm Theo Talcott. I'm your host. I'm joined by many amazing people and uh, amphibians. I'm Bob, spelled B-O-B, palindrome. If you add an extra O, it's uh <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> He's a climate denier, so, you know, we just... Uh... Climate? What's a climate? We have no climate. All we have is nothing. <laughs> Do you know about the Anyway, who are other What's guests so here? Funny about that I'm I'm show. Garrison. I'm I I'm Bob's uh, I'm Bob's better half. Civil union. <laughs> it's legal oh, in Vermont. Yeah, legal. That's actually marriage, no? Absolutely. Okay. And I'm Maxwell Aptenberg. Well, we're here to talk about the climate crisis and uh, many important issues going on with our planet. This is a kind of a loose environmental conversation about the most important things. So, let's get it started. Did you hear that? Um, worms are taking over the universe. Global warming. <laughs> Global warming. Oh no. Global warming. It's going to be a fertile universe. Fertile universe for me to plant my seed. Ha! <laughs> oh, Bob, yes. simmer and down. Me to lay my egg. <laughs> Whoa. Eggs and seeds. Eggs and seeds. That's really what it's all about. But more seriously, Theo, talk to us about the climate. Give us an update. Well, uh, the climate crisis continues. Uh, the mainstream media has got their heads in the sand. The New York Times has done some beautiful articles lately. But by and large, our society is in this delusional state where we're living in this sort of ahistorical, uh, corporate, sociopathic nightmare where they just like roll over us and do whatever they want and pollute all our skies. ExxonMobil makes more money in the history of, than any other company in the history of money, basically because they're using the sky as their like, open sewer. And uh, we have to challenge all that. The world is on fire. Our, our corporate sociopaths are running the world. The mainstream media is basically owned by General Electric, and so it's hard to get the word out about what's actually happening. So we're making media to try and do that ourselves, to say, like, this is what we say. This is how we talk to ourselves in Vermont about over the dinner table about, you know, our world. And we want to sort of bring these uh, kind of honest conversations to the world. So that's it. We don't want to burn it into a little crispy. No, we want to save it, you know, from the corporate sociopaths. Like, so um, one thing that I'm encouraged about is the Occupy Wall Street uh, protests. And uh, I know you guys have all been following this, and um, it seems like it's gathering steam. And um, Yeah, like we, we were there. Tell us uh, about going there. The f Mr. Frog and I, uh, was, it was actually a little bit accidental, but we stumbled upon it, and I was intrigued by what was going on there. Uh, I was inspiring a really positive group of people that were... Um, sort of coming together in a, in a community and forming consensus about these issues and some positive solutions and, and uh, really like sort of identifying the, the problems of our time, a lot of the corporate greed that plagues our society. So first thing is uh, to, to build community, build uh, consensus and awareness to the society was kind of just like being fed the um, corporate media and they're not getting a real honest truth like what they're getting from yeah, the climate like show. Yeah, like us. Oliver, Oliver the truth. I understand you were there in its infant stages, and since then, more than 700 people arrested, and the numbers have swelled and grown. That was, that was the largest uh, mass arrest in U.S. history. Really? Yeah. Really? Over, over 700 people. Did you hear about the buses? They commandeered these buses. The police, um, just, they were just, you know, city buses that were going by, and the police got on the bus, and they said, everyone on the bus, get off. This bus is now police uh, possession, and they loaded all the protesters onto the buses and took them to be processed. But then the next day, the uh, bus drivers' unions uh, sued the police for an really? injunction to say that you can't commandeer the buses unless there's imminent danger, and they said there's no imminent danger in that case, and uh, the police said they wouldn't do it again. Well, Speaking of record-breaking, today J.P. Morgan donated the largest ever amount to the NYPD, four and a half million dollars which uh, raises some eyebrows. For extra surveillance and data capturing and processing of information. And free beer to the cops for being such a good job, like, like leaning on the protesters probably. It's like letting them know whose side on, is on who, I think. And also I think this is a sign that these protests are becoming effective. Is if, if J.P. Morgan's kicking down money to the cops, you know that they're starting to worry about what's building out there. Effective? Can I speak now? Go. What do you want to say, Frog? Well, there was a lot of police officers there. Were they nice? Probably not. <laughs> All well, I heard. to the protesters. All I heard 
that's going on is a bunch of hippies rubbing essential oils all over themselves and doing the drum circles. <laughs> oh, you must watch Fox News. Bob. Oh, yeah. Kind of turned me on the drum circles, hearing those vibes, those rhythms, but I really think it's all a bunch of wacky schmacky, you know, getting around, doing nothing but sitting there. I know you prefer to listen to Kenny G, but it's actually nice when people get together and make their own music. What do you have against Kenny G? He can, he can hold a really long note. Hold yeah. <laughs> hey, his I have at. to speak now. Hey, Bob. I'm going to borrow some of your hair, all right? No. What? Just in a, in a nutshell, what I really like about that movement is that it's homemade, it's democratic, and it's putting up resistance to the corporate greed that is just so present everywhere in society. It's saying that we don't need the McDonald's and the Archer Daniels Midland and the Monsanto and Walmart and, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase of the world sort of, you know, telling us what to do and controlling the government. So it's just an opportunity for people to sort of go there and have solidarity. And I wonder community. how many of the protesters have been eating McDonald's. Not very many. I, I think, think they, so. you can order online, you can order pizzas and like online and get them delivered to the protest. Really? So people from all over the world are like uh, sending pizzas to So do support. we think that this protest is going to affect any actual change? Um, I think it already has sort of kind of pushed back on sort of this uh, Wall Street sense of like free to do whatever it wants. I mean, the more the, the, the spotlight shines on this sort of uh, part of our country that makes decisions for all of us based on what's in their self-interest, um, the better. And, and it's coalescing people around a, a movement, even if it's vague at this point. I mean, right. just to say, you know, that the environment and uh, not eliminating all the social services and, and we want to end the wars and you know we want to right. sort of um, tax uh, the wealthy proportionally so I think like these are issues which basically have had um, which have been blocked completely by the conservative you know uh, opposition in the government but they're basically it's not saying that these are democratic issues versus Republican issues it's saying these are the people's issues and we stand together to sort of say our our government is bought by corporations and th that are stopping progress, and we're right. going to stand together to sort of demand positive. It's, it's an issue of right versus wrong. It's like when you put Democrat and Republican on it, it immediately gives people a jumping off point to be partisan about it and to immediately write it off as you know another political scheme. But really, it's right versus wrong, and um, yeah. pretty clear we've been on the wrong path for a while now. Well, ultimately, I mean. You look at history, and governments are merely tools. I mean, everybody always likes to say, oh, the government's the doing government this or is that. A tool. There's lots of tools in the government. Yeah. Um, but, you know, ultimately, it's like they, they serve the people that are paying their salaries. And in America, with the Supreme Court making it so that you can give unlimited amounts, I mean, it peeled the veneer off of. You know, everybody has known that money has run it for a long time, and now it's just flagrantly yeah. so. And, I mean, history also shows that people will be ramrodded and poorly treated and run over until they come together and stand together and say, we've had enough of this. And that's, that's what people are starting to do. And, I mean, I, I, the, the whole media criticism of, like, oh, well, it's vague, and what do they really want? I mean, that's obviously just a bunch of BS. I mean, ultimately, people want to be treated with dignity and respect, and they want to have the public good going to the public, not funneled to the immense wealthy that are, uh, you know, basically paying the cops that are kicking everybody's, you know, heads in. It's just like there needs to be justice, and there's not justice in our culture. Do you think that the policies in Washington will ever really change without some sort of more dramatic collapse of the economy or a collapse of our food system or... Yeah, I don't, I don't think oil. we can. I don't I, think I, we can look to politicians to change the problems. I mean, right. I think that's been very clearly shown by where we are today. I mean, they're they're more concerned about saving their own butts and you know voting their own raises and their own benefits and stuff. Like their not their interest is not. I don't. In I the just American don't think we people. can give up on the political process that much. I mean, I think you know part of when the problem. When do you call it quits? I mean, I, mean, I just think like. At best, politics is how society figure out, how, figures out how to have an argument about what to do, and it's still possible that we could use the system of government to 
to get our needs met. Um, I, I really, I don't like this like plan. Like, oh, we'll wait, wait till the ecosystem collapses and then, or environmental, the, right. the monetary system collapses, and then we'll get our act together. Because it, it might be too difficult by then. It's like the problem is if we pass all these like climate tipping points, it may be, not be possible to di dial back. Like the New York Times article the other day was talking about um, how these forests are getting like uh, eaten by this uh, Colorado beetle, and it's causing like all this devastation of forests. And what's happened is it releases more at, uh, climate, carbon into the atmosphere because the forests suck up carbon, and then um, so it, it's like a feedback loop, you know. And you know, I just think we're like kind of heading towards this like mm -hmm. environmental Precipice. Know, collapse. And if we, I don't think we're going to be able at the end be like get to Mad Max and then be like, well, now let's get it together. Also, don't forget we're talking about the political process and affecting change. You can see what uh, a disaffected. Um, populace that allows something like what happened for the Bush Cheney years, you could see how fast you know it can get worse. So you could put you know put the mining people in charge of the you know EPA and you put you know like it's the, just the fox watching the hen house. Right. So I mean the point is that like with o Obama is not really showing himself to or he doesn't have the ability to really have a lot of positive change. But I mean they get at, at least with when with, you know when, when Bush and Cheney were in the uh, office it was set back by years. I think that whole partisan thing, though, is a, is a cloak and dagger game. I mean, Obama has ramped up things to level, in certain ways to levels even higher than Bush and Cheney. I mean, he, he's implemented draconian measures. I mean, he reapproved the Patriot Act. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, you know, we're, we're now bombing in six countries yeah. around the world illegally. Like, that's off the hook. That's unprecedented. But he's a Nobel Peace Prize winner. <laughs> yeah, he won the Nobel Peace, that, Peace that Prize, like, what, a day after he was right. sending drones through Libya? Not Libya, probably what was Afghanistan. It? Did you guys hear his, his speech at the Nobel? It no. was very brilliant and beautiful. I don't he believe should have turned it He, he should have said, give it to me after the war's over. What he over. said about power and peace was really good that day. I mean, he's he, a great speaker. Yeah, he's an awesome no, liar. That's true. Like, he, he's a pro. He's a professional liar. He gets compensated well for lying. The healthcare industry was one of his biggest supporters. Like, I mean, I, I don't, I don't put any faith in Barack Obama. I don't either, to be honest. I, I, have, I, I have a little. I bit think of he's a, a sheep in wolf's clothing, or no, whatever. A wolf in sheep's Bob, clothing. Bob, what do you think about Obama? I think Barack Obama is like your mama. So oh. fine. <laughs> Dirty old man. Nice one. Really old nice one, Bob. Thanks. <laughs> It's going to be people, and, and that's why the Occupy Wall Street ultimately is a beautiful thing and all the other things that are rolling out of it. Like, it's not going to be Barack Obama. It's not going to be politicians. It's going to be people coming together and demanding something different. Like, that's what, you know, these revolutions are happening all over the country that explicitly show that the political process does not work. It, it, it's been so corrupted that to try and re-engineer that, and, and you're talking about the immediate needs of climate change, like, Politicians are talking about oh, you know, reductions by 2050 and 20 like. That, that's, I, mean, that's I agree retarded. with you. I agree that the like, political system is so say that. so broken. It's not PC. Oh, sorry. It's more, uh, <laughs> it's more Mac. That's not that's not appropriate. Right. So that's the political process for you. Yeah. So uh, people need to create the change. Like when people come together, that you you look at history. That that is how. We've even arrived to where we are as people coming together and demanding change. It's not looking to other people to solve the problems for us. I agree. It should come from the grassroots. And, and also, but I think, like, we, we try and make our change. We try to eventually manifest it in what government does, too. It's like we sure. abolish slavery, uh, civil rights, women's rights, all these things, you know. So uh, eventually we have to figure out how to make government do what we want. And, um, you know, the idea of solving the climate crisis without having the government on board I mean, you know, good luck cutting national carbon emissions. These are big problems that you can't handle on an individual. You know, it, we need to move, I mean, we need to move off oil and we need to move off coal. And granted, our government is bought by the coal and oil companies. And so I don't know how we get to a place where our government serves our needs, but we have to figure out something about the climate crisis because we have like 10 or 20 years to deal with it. So I think to me that means like we have to lean into the government and make them do what we want. We need a climate champion in the White House. And uh, absolutely, how do you how do you get them there? The, the pizza 
the pizza guy, uh, Herman Cain, is the, I think he might be the only one who, <laughs> who acknowledges that uh, climate change is even real. It's crazy like, that climate change could be a political issue. Like, they could be debating it and saying, you know, that, um, that, that it's really even up for question. It, it's, it's absurd. And then it, it's labeled as a, it's a job killer. You know, it's like if you, if you uh, support right. anything to stop climate change, then you're anti-economic like growth. It's sort of an sort of ahistorical madness. It's like this, it, it, as if like they're having these arguments like outside the the sweep of time, and they're sort of like in this their bubble, and that's why like this this tar sands project I think is so uh, deranged, because it's like as if the climate crisis wasn't happening. They're gonna and then now they want to build this like huge tar sands oil project and run a pipeline 1,700 miles from Alberta to the Gulf of Mexico, through the Oguala Aquifer. And, um, the largest freshwater source in the United States. That's right. We might need that. Might. It kind of, I, like, I think I think we need water to live. Last time I checked, is that still the case? Uh, for me. I don't think Bob needs water. Bob. I don't need water. Oh. All I need is beer, liquor, and woman. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, what, what do you think about the tar sands? I think, you know, I don't really mind because I don't live off water, but if I did, it's quite nasty how they put that pipeline down there. The only pipeline that should be allowed is one going through your digestive system. <laughs> you gotta keep those pipes clean. Oh, keep them so clean. Colonoscopy, the way to go. <laughs> really just eat some sauerkraut, Bob. That'll Bye, work. Bob. So you may be wondering why we're trying to include humor in a subject as serious as tar sands and oil and climate crisis and the collapse of our government to corporations. But it's because uh, these things are boring if you only talk about them. So we're trying to be funny also. And I read this thing in the Yale um, Climate and Communication something, something. Um, Was that the thing about the worms taking over the world? No. I read about that. Global warming? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And I think I would correct you, not on, not that those topics are boring, they're just heavy because it's, it's serious. Heavy. They're not boring. So I mean, we're trying to add a little bit of lightness salient. to the heaviness. Yeah. So. Why can't everyone just go and grow their own food? Just, you know, live on a farm and grow a garden. Stop worrying about all the bullshit. We can do that. And I say, you I can't, can't say, say that. that. You can't say Sorry. that. Sorry. If I can't say retarded, you can't say that. <laughs> That's... All right, we're going to have to cut this Hey, moment. Sarah, can you stop Sorry, laughing wait, no, so loud? Wait, <laughs> wait, Sarah, introduce yourself. Come back, come back. Please. <laughs> Please. That was yeah. our lovely climate assistant, dancer. Sarah, the uh, great uh, noble camera woman. And, uh, do a climate dance. Do a <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. True. We, I mean, if anybody says climate, that you can't have fun with climate, like they obviously they haven't seen this show and our climate dancers so yep. beautiful. We did want to have a, a, the climate the climate dancers. I thought it'd be fun. It's like once you got you got boring, hey. you'd be like, oh, call on the climate dancers. Maybe next hey. week we can hire some. Bob, you know any jokes? <laughs> and then we can like, you know, Burning Man it out <laughs> with some hula jokes? hoops and fire spinning. Maybe. Yeah. They probably wouldn't let us have jokes. fire here. That's true. Plus, eat not no. eco. You yeah, that's, that's not you climate friendly. Burning wood. Oh, I thought of something. I thought about, <clears throat> I was thinking about like, if you were a climate activist and you wanted to be a suicide bomber, you wouldn't be able to blow yourself up because it would make too much carbon. You could, you'd be so So what you could do is so you could like conflicted. go up to the door of something you wanted to blow up and then isn't compost the, yourself on their stoop. Isn't the goal to choose life? It is, of course, uh, to choose yeah. life. It's just ironic that if you wanted to be like isn't it the woman's choice <laughs> you went to the 350 thing what were some of the key points that you took away from that that you think are salient to today um so i because uh, <laughs> i got to have faith faith, faith, faith faith you got to have faith because the climate movement is building more and more people are aware of climate change every day it's becoming a mass consciousness thing gradually you're becoming a complete idiot if you don't believe in cl the climate issue uh, or you know, if you don't know about it, if you're a denier, I mean, I just, I can't even believe the Republican candidates are like all climate deniers. Like that's the group stance. Is that not the house of like the Adams family or something? This like arcane Gothic bunch of like 
Well, here, here, here's a good analogy on that. I mean, you know, Rick, Rick Perry, who's one of the most outspoken climate deniers, I mean, it just came out that his uh, exclusive family retreat in Texas for a long time was named Niggerhead. I heard that. You know, it had, it had that painted on the, on the entryway. So, I mean, you know, the, the, these are the caliber of people that we're talking about that are climate right. change deniers. So it's, it's kind of like people just need to be exposed to the just like blatant insanity yeah, I mean, of we're this, just you like know? the world is filled with like some reactionaries and there's progressives and reactionaries and like there's this whole culture of people who just wanted to kind of pretend it's the 1950s and go back and I, I would love maybe to go back to the 1950s pieces of it 20s go see Allen Ginsberg read Howl for the first time be nice but other than that you know I'm done with the 50s and, and I don't flappers. need to go back you know and um, flappers yeah. 20s hey Bob what do you think about flappers flappers are nice Except when they don't flap. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta take some more of your hair. No, no! Yes. <laughs> that joke's a funny one, isn't it? Gets funnier each time, almost. <laughs> <laughs> almost, yeah, almost but not. Yeah, gonna take your mouth. <laughs> uh, I've seen some interesting and disturbing things about uh, the ice shelf um, in the Canadian uh, Arctic. That they, thought was, that they thought was the most solid. They thought it was the most solid, and it's now crumbled into like chunks the size of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And that was the one they thought would be the last to oh, go. Man. So it's just happening so much faster than anyone ever right. anticipated. And, th and this is like, well, I'll go back to Obama. It's like at the same time that that's happening, he just approved drilling in the Arctic shelf and all this other stuff. You know, it's like you, you can't look at the immense amount of information that is overwhelmingly present and make decisions like that if and claim to be a responsible individual like it's, that's flagrantly it's true I, I mean flagrantly I'm, irresponsible I've been a diehard Obama guy and but recently I'm just sort of like the fact that, it, that this Keystone pipeline is still up in the air and that we have seen no progress on climate you know I really think we need a climate champion in the White House and it, I would love it if Brock stepped up to bat and did it but if he's not gonna do it let's uh, have Bill McKibben be up there or uh, any of a thousand other people who... His hands are tied, honestly. I don't think that there's much he can do. And, I mean, do we want to talk about, like, details? I mean, like, you know, the, the, one of the main people running the company that wants to build the pipeline uh, used to be one of Hillary Clinton's uh, right-hand people. I mean, you know, it's like, it's so, it's so incestuous and tight. I mean, it's like... A, Big money business orgy. political orgy yeah i mean yeah. it's just like everybody's got their hands in everybody else's pockets and it's a <laughs> business orgy it's well a i have no pockets so who's gonna put their hands in my <laughs> ah! <laughs> put your hand in my mouth i see <laughs> bob quit hitting yourself okay <laughs> <laughs> he's a headbanger a head i have a bang over <laughs> well, I think, you know, in, in movements like uh, Transition Town, you know, it's like they're not expecting for problems to be solved by other people. It's like they're coming together and saying, okay, you know, peak oil, whenever, if it, people want to debate if that's already happened, is happening, it's going to happen in five, whatever. But, you know, it's like it will happen. It's a finite resource. So if it isn't already happening or has, it will. And it's like preparing for that. And like you were asking about people growing their own food and stuff. Like, you know, back in the 50s and prior, people did grow a lot of their own food. Like it wasn't uncommon for people to understand how to grow food. And like we've totally, through the commodification of our food culture and everything else, we've moved away from that to where most people don't even know where but food comes from. But there's bright news on this, right? This is like one of the few bright signs is that uh, last year, it was the first year in the last hundred years that there were more farms than there were the year before in America. Awesome. It's true. Awesome. So that one's not doom and gloom. Yes. We're and bringing heard, it back. And I heard more, there's like college kids, one of the, the professions they most want to go into is farming. But something funny about that, we were listening to NPR a couple days ago, and they had this guy who was supposedly speaking for the lost generation, like the 20 to 30-year-olds. I didn't care much for what he had to say. Oh, it was ridiculous. He said that uh, all these kids that were wanting to get into farming, it was like, it was cynical because they were opting out of society. Oh my God. I mean, it was just absurd that this guy, you know, was purporting to speak for his generation and saying something wow. like that. He, I mean, his society I, is like so far out of whack and it's, people are trying to get back to the roots and 
I mean, he's, he's, he's right from the perspective of the last hundred years, but go back for the thousands of years and we've survived off people growing food and that's, uh, that's where it's at. I just, I just think people like go back to farming because they, the modern world keeps you in these like electric lights so much and sitting by your computer and people end up needing to go be on, in the sun and on the land in order to heal themselves and reconnect to the earth and their, their true nature. Some cities are doing a decent job, like Chicago is one of, I mean, even though they they do a lot of other tweaked stuff, but I mean, they're, they're one of the most progressive as far as uh, encouraging rooftop gardens. There's a lot of rooftop gardening going on. Um, Beautiful work. When I was in New York, uh, around around from the corner from us, there was an um, Italian restaurant, and they actually took like these abandoned... Uh, lots in this industrial neighborhood and built raised beds and they're growing a lot of their own food. I mean, it's like you can see movements obviously outside of cities, but even within cities, people are taking an interest in trying to provide more local local things, which lo locality is also one of the huge issues. I mean, we're going to be coming up against uh, a big front of the inability to transport things easily across the country or around the world. And so people whether they be in cities or rural areas, being able to look locally is, is key. But all this, it also ties back to the Wall Street thing because here it is, it's like, you know, why do we need to grow our own food? It's because you can't take the corporate, you know, junk food that is being given to you. Yeah. And you can't, you know, just, it's all this, it's the, it's the movement that says, we have to do it ourselves together. We're not gonna uh, buy what's being sold to us from, from, it, from any of these, you know, guys that are that are making the problems worse. Wasn't that a great place to start, though, with food sovereignty? Like, let's all source our food locally. Let's all decide where we buy our food from. Think how much would change if that one rule alone was enacted. And that, all, that's you know, why Monsanto is so against food sovereignty. I'm surprised Sedgwick, Maine, was able to get away with it, and they haven't. Fa I don't. I mean, I haven't followed up since I heard about. You know, they declared food sovereignty, so anyone in Sedgwick, Maine, can you know, decide who they want to buy their, their food from and anyone can, you know, sell food to anyone else. And I haven't followed up to see if there's been any resistance from corporations or the federal government, but I think that's a great first step and I would love to see that enacted across, you know, the country. Food sovereignty. Absolutely. Um, tell, thing. tell this to the people that are, you know, lining up at, at Shaw's and, and Price Chopper yeah. instead of sourcing out, you know, it takes a little more work to to find this stuff yeah. from uh, from your neighbors sometimes than it does to you know sure. go to the big box store and get it all. But ultimately, again, I, there there needs to be more community action. Like people people need to get up out of their chairs, off their computers, and go relate with one another. Like that's ultimately the way it. Climate change is going to be addressed. All these things are going to be addressed. Like people have to actually relate with one another. I mean, that's a simple word, but it's like which it's is a one of the hardest word. things. That Humans are so much more difficult than just staring at your TV. You, you might have to... And that's, I mean, all these things of, like, people being isolated and, like, Not that feeling... you shouldn't be watching your TVs. I mean, thank you for watching our show. Well, things like this are important, you know, of this course. This is good television. Good television. you ever tele read Bowling Alone? <laughs> no. It's funny that the rise of the Internet was inversely graphed with the downfall of bowling leagues. <laughs> They're just coming back. Are they? Bowling, roller skating. We don't skating. bowl enough. I think that's something we could talk about is just we should bowl more. We would like to get the bowling alley in Manchester working again. Bowling is very zen. It is, but it's not that wholesome really. I think that roller really? skating is way better. Why I is mean, bowling not wholesome? What about roller skating so and sustainable. bowling? so sustainable. You keep reusing the same yeah. balls, the same shoes. It keeps picking up the same pins. Or what about volleyball? Volleyball's the 12 good. tribes people really like volleyball because, first of all, you don't need to pay to go to do it. All you right. need is a net. Everyone does every position. And uh, like it doesn't go into like it's not like in a oh, it doesn't take place in a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Is this climate related? <laughs> Bob's climate. Speaking of climate, it's getting hot in Bob's climate. It's getting hot in. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> so take off all my clothes. But oh wait, not... I have none. <laughs> you have a scarf. You take off your scarf. I don't want to take off my scarf. It hides my scar. Do you have a scar? Scar! From like vampires? Yeah, I got bit the other day. Sucked all my blood. What? Kinda felt good. Yeah! Wow. 
<laughs> well. Uh, <laughs> thanks for sharing, Bob. You're thanks, welcome. Bob. <laughs> Next but, time you see a vampire, make sure he bites you on your neck and not your butt. <laughs> yeah. Bobby, you're a little bit of an oversharer, but that's good. We like your. It's good to come up forward. TMI, Bob. Keep it real. TMI. <laughs> what the hell is TMI? Some internet lingo, you goddamn chump. Yeah. No cussing Can't on. Can't say that. Come on, Bob. Keep <laughs> it clean. We're, keep it clean, Club. Bob. <laughs> Best show ever. Best, Best show, show ever. Best yeah. show ever. I would like to say everyone should pay attention to the Tar Sands action and the it, uh, efforts to, to block the Tar Sands project. If you want to submit comments to the State Department, you can online. I encourage you to stand up for against a giant industrial project that is kicking native peoples off their land and uh, polluting the whole world. With Here's a quick tangent. It's an iPhone app that you know how like people always say, contact your congressman, contact whatever. It's an iPhone app that you put in your zip code and it tells you who all your representatives are and it gives you their email address and phone number so you can just like pow right there. Like have a question like, how's it going, Senator? Like, pow. <laughs> I'm sure the secretary They can be like, I'm on the golf app. course, don't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> Putting you in touch with your with your representative, but anyway, tar sands. Tar sands. Uh, also known as the XL pipeline. The XL pipeline. Um, extra long. <laughs> extra large. Extra large. Extra lousy. Large and in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty old man. That that really is what the seminal issue. Well, I mean, there's lots of that. That's one of the, that's a crux. Like if that baby doesn't get addressed. Uh, that that could very well cook it. I mean, for example, like climate, the climate crisis is so serious. We need to like not allow the corporations to do whatever they want. And ExxonMobil cannot build a pipeline across the United States. It's, it's just ahistorical. It's not the era we live in. We're on this like doom course to climate oblivion. And if we don't get on it, we're you know we have to. So we can't live in this this like 1950s fantasy culture of uh, people in Dallas who want to like live in air conditioning when it's 100 degrees out 40 days this year. In Dallas, over 100 degrees. Record I drought. hope the oilmen down there realize, like, it's real, people. The climate crisis is already here, and we have to get on it. And that means, like, massive changes towards getting off fossil fuel and coal and moving towards solar and wind and hydro. I think you, you're asking where it's going to come from. I mean, unfortunately, based on the United States' performance, I think it's going to come from outside. I mean, you... you kind of like talking about the fox watching the hen house, like we're not doing it here. And so I think it's going to be countries that don't have the military power and all this other stuff that lead the way. I mean, like in, whether it's Europe or Asia or elsewhere, but it's going to be other countries that leave us behind. I mean, people have this illusion that, you know, people that are still thinking, oh, America number one or whatever, like America is only approximating number one and a lot of the more negative issues uh, in that you'd be ranked for like you know lack of education lack of health care etc if you we're, go to if you go to the Netherlands uh, you, you'll see a country that is like 20 years ahead of us in environmental issues there's public transportation everywhere there's bike lanes everywhere there's very few cars uh, we need to look to northern Europe to as to, uh, directions to go on on many issues yeah, and that'll happen when Americans get fed up, like when they actually finally enough people realize that they've been duped and the rest of the world is leaving us behind. I mean, w one, one issue I see is that, like, everybody wants to make money. Like, our society is, like, the super, like, let's make money society. And the problem is, like, there's a lot to solve a lot of these issues. You might make less money for somebody. Like, you know, if you wanted to have uh, everybody have free electricity, you could just put it on top of their house. But the utilities don't want people to have free electricity. Uh, so it's like a bad solution. Or um, I, I want to mention this thing about the smart meters. Um, there's a, a new issue coming up in Vermont where the utility is wants to come to your house and take off your um, clothes, your uh, current meter, current meter, and put on a smart meter, which is like a, a meter with a cell phone in it, and it would basically basically be sending out signals all the time to this uh, big system, which would, in theory, allow the utilities to manage the flow better and so forth. But the problem is, uh, for one, the, the technology they rest on, uh, electromagnetic radiation, Wi-Fi, cell phone, is not healthy. It's not good for human biology. For two, it allows uh, the utility company to, in theory, spy on you because they can tell what you, kind of electricity you're using and, and when and 
Let's uh, circle it back around. Oliver, what do you think it would be in a perfect world a realistic outcome of the occupation on Wall Street? Uh, w uh, in a perfect world, world like what's a realistic okay, outcome? Okay, here's, here's what happened. Okay. Same thing that happened in Egypt where and there's enough critical mass that people realize, hey, these are the guys that are going to win. I don't want to be with these, you know, fuddy-duddies that are denying the reality. I want to be with these young people on the ground that are taking action, that are be, that are happy. And, and uh, so, you want to put so all the politicians come. No, no. All the politicians come down to the protest, and they say, "Hey, look, there's a, a brighter way," and they uh, embrace it, and uh, they sh they sort of put down their their bickering, and they accept the reality of the situation, and come to a consensus of what has to be done. Already today, Bernie Sanders spoke. Uh, in favor of the protesters while he was grilling Ben Bernanke, who you what? look a little like Ben Bernanke, the kind of great like bald head. And well, I'd like uh, to see are you sure your name Barack is Obama ben? come to the protest and, uh, and you know, sort of re champion, reconnect too. right with the the, the uh, people that put him in power and the, the sort of that, that young energy that was there at the inauguration. You know, everybody was so excited for what the potential was of the things he was saying. But let's see him sort of reconnect with that movement and maybe get the Republicans there too and get everybody together and uh, pay, pay the bongos and go pass some positive legislation and and uh, make make a, be make a better day for you and for me. Yeah, man. I'd like to see the stock exchange ended. Just like everyone stops the sick, like money obsessed, like game of delusion and everyone just goes to the nearest field and plants some potatoes and some food and uh, throws a frisbee Play some, <laughs> play some bongos. <laughs> uh, I don't endorse this one. I think that, I think that there has to be, as far as where the stock market goes, there would be real Armageddon in a lot of the good institutions too if all the capital that was tied up in Wall Street just dissipated. I think that there's a, a way to, um, there's a way to have a, a gradual uh, <laughs> transition from um, our, you know, sort of, overly greedy capitalist society to sort of a benign uh, capitalist society where we can sort of still... I mean, that's sort of the best we can hope for is benign capitalism. I mean, as long no, as we can take on the no, 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 no. rapacious... Come on, that's the best we no, can hope for. No, that's not the best No, no, but that, that's not the best that we can hope for. That would be a good start, But look, though. let's just... That would be a good start. I mean, if we could get away from the You don't want every endowment of every good organization to have all their savings wiped out and everyone's going to be like, you know, looking for scraps in their potato field. I mean, thing is that we need some of this, <laughs> we need some of the infrastructure that we've grown accustomed to, but we just need to be positive and we need to realize that we're all in together. If the world melts, no one gets to keep their millions of dollars, so it's we true. need to work together. The to Hamptons will not be there if the climb it raises 20 feet. And so we're all in this together, rich and poor, Wall Street financier and uh, hippies in Vermont. And so we got to get it together, people. The world is in dire crisis. And um, come protest with us Sunday night in New York City, Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. we'll see you. We'll see you at Occupy Wall Let's Street. We'll see you next again. week. Uh, the same bad time, same bad channel, the climate show. Thank you to my guests, Bob especially. You've been great. Thanks. Ay, ay, ay. Climate Show!